Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome to theCUBE, Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We are in Washington, D.C. at Boomi World 19. John and I have been here now for two days, and we're pleased to welcome another CUBE alumni back to our program, Michael Morton, the CTO of Boomi. Michael J. Morton. Thank you, it's so How great to be back with you guys. Great to see you. I love uh, this, I love uh, this, this is great. So we were geeking out the last day and a half, John and I were with all of our guests and realized, you know, Boomi World 2018 was only 11 months ago. Yep. So here we are in DC, lots of news around FedRAMP marketplace certification, but in such a short period of time, Boomi has scaled to 9,000 plus customers in over 80 countries. Your partner ecosystem is now over 580, right. all in 11 months. And 11 months ago, one of the things that was very clear from all of the Boomi execs is we're going to redefine the I in iPads to yep. be intelligence. Now here we are, yep. fast track a few months later, we're going to be talking about, or Boomi is talking about redefining that I to be intelligent insights. Mm. Cool yes. stuff. Yep. Talk to us about the insights. Okay, so let's talk about intelligence first. Um, so everybody's intelligence happy, of course, but we've been very disciplined of actually being articulate about what does intelligence mean, not just a label. So we have a history of intelligence being how can you facilitate customers building solutions on Boomi faster. That's our legacy. And so we'll always continue to add new features to the product. But we had an opportunity that we realized we kept it in our back pocket for a little while, right? And that's around insights. So we knew that the way the world uses Boomi is to integrate data. They connect to things, they move data. But now we're kind of shifting a little bit and saying, it defines what your business is doing, not what your data is doing, right? So, now comes insights. The first for any iPads to do is, now we can intelligently tell you what is your business doing. So now we had to make a decision. We can't just advertise it and say, we do this, right, and hey, wave our hands. So we said, we're going to pick a business challenge not a very common one, just kidding of course. What's a business challenge that every business has? Data privacy. So we chose the insights to say, we want to help customers address a business challenge of data privacy. It makes perfect sense. If Boomi is the traffic to running your business about moving data, it makes, what's data privacy? It's about getting your arms around the movement of your data. So it just was a perfect fit for an integration platform as a service to expose in a much different way where is the data about your business actually coming and going. Is it going to be part of the product, chargeable, free? How are you guys thinking about these insights? Is it going to be a module? Is it going to be a connector? How do you guys think about the insights piece of it from a consumption standpoint, from a customer standpoint? Okay, so I'll take it one step at a time. Uh, I will just be honest and say, we have yet to decide, uh, is it a charge for feature? We're still evolving it, but consumption's a very important question. So today, what we're doing is, we have this capability working today. It's, uh, we talked about it in stage, uh, very comfortable about speaking about it because we're working with a set of customers that gave us real feedback about what's important, what's not important. The consumption's a very interesting question because depending on the role, right? If you are a chief security officer, what do you want to see? Do you want to see PDFs? Do you want to see reports? Or do you want APIs to get the data to consume into something else? So one of our to-dos is consumption. How do you want to receive this information? So this is actually in the works. So I can see policy and AI being helpful there. Um, you mentioned privacy, I want to get that in a second, but why not security? That's a number one problem too. Data privacy and security, is it just too elusive? Or is it too hard? 
I think they go together. Okay, so to explain, what, what's going on? How does security fit into this? Yeah, I mean, I think that security, there's many aspects of security, obviously, but I mean, security from an access standpoint, right? So I'll take, I'll take the, the position of access. One of the reasons why customers buy Boomi today is they want to expose a certain amount of data to consumers, either for monetization, or to an application, or to a consumer, or to a, a website, right? And so, one type of security is how do you limit the data that you get access to? And so, today, I'll go back to intelligence or insights. Yeah, exactly, same. It is not out of the realm of possibility that we actually show you who's accessing the data. Yeah, I mean, if data's moving around, that's when the thieves are also moving around too, and the bad actors. Yes. So that's a good op observation yep. opportunity. Yep. And that's kind of where this comes from, right? This whole ability to observe Observability. That's right. Observe That's access. Um, I think, I mean, impersonations is a very you know, popular thing. You can impersonate people, but yeah. the whole ability to observe inbound requests, right? I mean, there's always traffic controls on API gateways and things like that, which you know, we'll fully support. But security, I mean, it comes with access. I want to get your thoughts on a couple things while you're here. Observability yep. remind me of this Cloud 2.0 conversation we've been having on theCUBE. We're kind of goofing on Web 2.0, Cloud 2.0. Now, cloud 1.0, Amazon. Storage, compute, scale up, everyone's born there, yep. loves it, no problem, no issues. Just grow and buy as you go, it's great stuff. At some point when you're an enterprise, it's not that easy. That's right. So from Cloud 2.0, observability has really taken network management to a whole nother level. And that's a data problem. So people going public, SignalFX got acquired, you know, it's a whole industry now. Automation is evolving out of the configuration management area. RPA has got some AI in it. So you know, if yep. you connect the dots here, I can see you kind of know where yep. I'm going with this. Yep. Observability is data. Automation is about making things easier. Yep. How do you see those components fitting into the boomy world? Because architecturally, they're now building blocks for either conversational AI or some sort of insights and intelligence. What is, what's the framework, what's the building blocks to make all this data value come to life? How would you talk about that? Well, I mean, you're asked, I, I broke down your whole tirade there into many <laughs> sections tirade, already. good word, that's okay. a great word. All right, <laughs> so let's talk about, um, uh, in relationship to Boomi. Um, you use the word infrastructure, you use the word network, you threw a lot of things in there. and I Tirade, that's for sure. And yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, now I have a soup, so I'll just try to pick <laughs> pieces out of the soup that I think are relevant. Okay. So, again, I'll tie back to intelligence a little bit. Boomi, when you use the product, there's an engine that you run, it's a container, right? So you build in the cloud in Boomi, and then you choose where you want to run, right? And Part of our efforts around intelligence is to keep that runtime environment healthy and maybe scaling, right? So automation for Boomi will be, let me look at the workloads that are, you are using to run on Boomi and predict when I need to scale your environment. Automation. You'll see slowly even more automation capabilities yep. to make it easier for scaling, sizing, so that's one aspect of hopefully answering what you're asking and trying to dissect a little bit yeah, about yeah, automation. Yeah. So one will be automation for ourselves. I mean, to help basically make, just don't think about your Boomi runtime anymore. It's just going to work. It's just going to scale. So we, we are planning to get to that point where it's fully automated. And that's efficiency for you? Creates value? Yeah, correct. Deploy resources to other areas? Yes, but the, here's, the, here's something else to consider, is um, it, also, it also saves our support organization the call. Yeah. That's the most important thing, is a company when you scale, is you have to put in your company culture as you build the product, what can you do to avoid that service call coming in? So I do want to talk about culture a little bit, even for intelligence, and I, I like to give a very simple example about how does a, a product like Boomi change their culture about building in intelligence into, their com into the product. And I have a great example. So let's say I'm a developer that's been assigned to put a new feature in Boomi, and it has five configuration parameters that you need to ask the customer to configure before you can use it. Why? Why five? Can't I just tell the customer what they need for three of those, and now there's only two? 
and it gets people thinking. Oh yeah, I guess I could have gone back into their metadata. They already did, they already did this one, so why don't I just grab, grab that value that they already did? And, and that's an interesting mind shift when you think about it is, yeah. instead of five, I challenge you to get down to two. Get it down to two. So intelligence is not just an outward facing customer feature, it's a development culture. Yeah, I mean, so you're talking about operating systems, it's really a great conversation because, you know, when you look at data and, you're, and, and, and what you were talking about the, the, back to the demo and the privacy conversation that you guys are talking about is, if you think about data holistically, as a system, not as a isolated thing. Because yep. that's what you're getting at, it's a systems approach. It is. If the data's some way, why have another form? You get it, pull it in, automation. But as you did the demo, people were buzzing about, mind blowing, whoa, look what's flying around. Yep. What was the purpose behind the demo? What was your main point? What were you trying, what were you trying to get across in that demo? that you wanted people to walk away with? Was it that there's this threat, this threats out there, that's an issue, or there are problems to be solved, or is this cool? What was the main driver behind the demo and the privacy as the first step? It's a very good question. And so I'll give you the first thing that comes to mind. Data is a living, the company and data is a living ecosystem. It never stops. It's always in motion. It's harder to manage. It's harder to observe. Boomi is meant to basically build the engine of your living ecosystem, right? How can you possibly, as a human, get insight into that ecosystem? It's impossible. But with a product like Boomi, we're giving you insights into the living part of your business. That's really the theme. Now applying to, you said threats. Good word. Threats to what? In this case, it's threats to being fined by GDPR. It's not necessarily a security breach, yeah. but fines are real now. I mean, like there's monetary loss. And so that's, that's the message. What have some of the, the, you mentioned the word mind shift in your demo this morning. You mentioned it a minute ago. When you've been working with some of these customers helping you evaluate this intelligent insight capability, what, have, what has been the mind shift there in terms of exposing this information, what are some of the things these customers have been really like, whoa, really surprised that this intelligent insights can show them that they just had no idea about with respect to their business? Yep, great question because um, uh, I gauge success on the reaction, right? And in this case, the human reaction is actually seeing a map between countries with lines. It's actually that simple to visually be able to see as a human the flow of data. Then on top of that, the flow of private data. It is, that it's is. It's like an x-ray, it's like looking at the bloodstream. Ah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, I mean the blood's flowing. In right, you can't, I can't see your blood. Yeah. I can't see it, right? I know it's there. Yeah, I think so, right? it's red. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it's like Superman. You can see through the, the, the the data points to get in on what you want because the data is flowing, and you guys make that observable. Now, what about the data that's not in the Boomi platform? Connectors, how would people, I mean, so obviously not, Boomi's not everywhere, you got 9,000 customers, yep. not 900,000 <clears> customers, so there's a lot of other businesses that aren't using Boomi. Can I leverage it with other platforms? How do you think about that? Um, again, I'm going to interpret what you're asking. <laughs> there's. <laughs> There's many other sources of data, of course, that people are not using Boomi to access. But if um, this may be a bit of a, a, uh, a salesman uh, opinion, the more you use Boomi, the more insights you're going to get. So why wouldn't you connect to those things? So, but connecting means I can just connect the data. So I'll give you a hypothetical real world okay. example. We have so much data on these CUBE interviews. In fact, after this CUBE interview is done, your words will be transcribed into a transcript, be linked to the video, we can make clips out of it. So big data set, when people will share those clips, we know who's sharing the data. So we are uh, a lot of data, a lot of good data. Yep. So I mean, I'd be like, hey, I'd like to tap into that Boomi. Why build it? I can just connect. So do I connect all my application into Boomi or just my data? That's actually interesting. Now, of course, I'm the CTO of the business, so I'm going to invent stuff on the fly, because that's what I do, right? Yeah. Do you have metadata about, like, do you have metadata about, about these have, files? We have APIs, metadata, all kinds of stuff, right. yeah. So, 
what we would expect would be this. You would need to, if you're looking for other insights, right, you're going to now start combining data. So yeah. analytics is really about taking multiple sources of data, putting it in one place, and mining it for new insights because of correlating things together. And that validates your point about being that sales rep because more data, the better, better data. Yep. Look, we just did a master class here. <clears throat> master and student, real time. This on is the, the, fly. the second like, master class you guys have done at Dell Technologies World. There was a master class on blockchain I sat in between I the I got to say, yep. that's a new format. We should look at in this real-time invention. I love it. <laughs> well, Michael, thank you so much for joining John and me on theCUBE. It's been really exciting to see in 11 months what's transpired yep. for Boomi. We can't wait for next Boomi World. I can't wait to hear how this double eye intelligent uh, Maybe another eye. insights, eye cubed. Mm, I3, all right, all right. Thanks we won't for coming quote on. you on that, but we appreciate it. Great this. to see you. Very cool stuff. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Boomi World 19. Thanks for watching.